Now, before you buy the Apple Watch Ultra or the Garmin Epix Pro Gen 2, there are some things that you might wanna know. I've been wearing these watches for the past couple of weeks and I'll discuss a variety of topics all the way from the hardware and design to the software and the recovery metrics to my overall thoughts and experience. Which one will I actually keep? From a design and durability perspective, they're both built to last. The only downside to the Apple Watch Ultra is that it has a digital crown where you can get like sand and other objects stuck inside of it, as well as the microphone and speaker, whereas the Garmin does not have these and it only has five buttons. So there's a higher probability that it can withstand more extreme conditions. And now I also have the Phoenix 7X Pro. And actually, surprisingly, none of my watches have ever broken. This is the first watch that has. One of the buttons on here just doesn't work. My Ultra and the Epix Pro were totally fine. I'll take them into the areas that I'm not supposed to. Don't tell anybody. And so far, they've seen to survive. I've hit both watches up against the wall as I'm walking around places, and they have like minor signs of use, but none of them have gotten destroyed, and none of the screens have cracked, so they're pretty durable. When it comes to the strap, they both have a kind of a quick release option, so you can switch out the strap that you're using. I tend to prefer more of these like Velcro straps they are a bit flexible, and you can kind of like put them on and off, but these silicone straps are also nice. These are more secure. If you can latch it in multiple ways, you're less likely to lose the watch, whereas if I use this kind of like quick strap Velcro here, it tends to kind of come unhooked or get stuck on my clothes when I'm putting a jacket on. So just be mindful of which strap and what environments you're using that watch in. When it comes to how quickly they can dry, with a silicone strap, you typically would want to remove it and dry it before you place it back on. With these more flexible ones, they're probably going to absorb the moisture and then dry slowly over time. In terms of fashion statements, the Garmin definitely says, I'm an intense athlete, I love to do sports. Whereas the Apple Watch Ultra kind of says I'm an intense athlete, but also says I'm a techie and I'm an Apple fanboy or girl. I know people in the comments are gonna start to hate on each other. Oh my God, I just switched from Garmin to Apple and now I'm an Apple person. They're both great watches. When it comes to hardware, there is one advantage the Garmin Epix Pro has over the Apple Watch Ultra and that is the hardware buttons. I love being able to press kind of the up down buttons. You can start a run purely based on physical buttons. Although I love the touchscreen and the touch experience in the Apple Watch is 10 times better. Anytime there's moisture involved or I just can't physically reach certain areas, having physical buttons is way better. Which leads us into the display and user experience. The Epix Pro does have the new color AMOLED, so it's trying to compete with the Apple Watch Ultra. Because on the Phoenix, right, it's darker, it's kind of like black and white, not as exciting. There is a little bit of color, but it's not the same. The Ultra is way brighter. Like, I can easily see it in daylight. Glanceability is pristine. Whereas the Epix Pro Gen 2 is like pretty good. It's good enough. And then when it comes to actually using the watch, the Apple Watch just feels like it's responsive, whereas the Garmin, it's, it's like lags just by some milliseconds where I can notice the slowness sometimes, but because it just feels more like a classic, rugged, old school watch, I'm okay with letting those things slide. Apple Health integration. Here are two screenshots. This is the Garmin Apple Health, and this is the Apple Watch Apple Health. Obviously, same operating system, deeper integration, more data. Garmin provides some data, but not all the same data. As someone who just loves data, I just like to have as much as possible, so that's why I keep wearing the Apple Watch. When it comes to third-party integrations, both of them can connect to Strava. Garmin automatically uploads from the app to the Garmin server and then to Strava. So it's pretty seamless. I've never had issues with Garmin uploading. Sometimes their servers will be down and it might be delayed, but it's pretty fast. There's no problems there. When it comes to the Apple Watch Ultra, you have to actually go in and turn on automatic uploads in the Strava app. You have to give it access to Apple Health. And sometimes it doesn't work perfectly. So you have to manually import it. And then the data isn't exactly the same. Like the mileage might show something on the Apple Fitness app, whereas it shows a different value on the Strava app. So honestly, I don't know what's going on when the data gets transferred. And when it comes to sharing on social media. I know people love taking those photos of their watch right after the run. It's more fun to actually just screenshot the Apple Fitness app and share that screenshot from your iPhone versus on the Garmin, it's cool to see the visual map and the distance you ran. So I just like sharing social media pictures from my Garmin watch over the Apple Watch Ultra. If you do plan to buy any of these products, I will have them linked down below. And if you click that link, it helps support the channel, so I greatly appreciate it. Fitness tracking. Garmin is a fitness and sports watch, whereas Apple Watch Ultra could be considered a smart watch with sports tendencies, but every year Apple just keeps releasing more and more features to compete with Garmin. Really wanna see Garmin step up their game because Apple's fighting for your market share, baby. Also, Apple PR is amazing. They're really helpful in terms of providing info so I can make these videos better. Garmin, non-existent. I wanna learn more about Garmin watches. Please just give me more info. Both the Garmin Epix Pro and the Apple Watch have a plethora of different fitness tracking options, but I think the most important ones are outdoor fitness tracking. You have your running, your cycling, and your swimming, probably the top three sports, and then there's a whole bunch of other little things too. When it comes to starting the fitness tracking, the Garmin is super easy because you can just press one button, select your workout type, and then another button to get that workout started after you've discovered GPS. The Apple Watch Ultra does have precision start. You need to activate it in your settings, and then you can go ahead and use the touchscreen to select your workout type 
type and then press the action button to start that workout. And both watches provide the ability for you to wait until GPS is locked and acquired so your distance and pacing data is close to accurate as possible. When it comes to heart rate data, I know the quantified scientist Rob has done a ton of videos where he's shown that the Apple Watch heart rate data can be more accurate than all the other watches. I do prefer to wear a chest strap because that will just measure the electrical signals on my heart and that can be more accurate as well as more responsive in terms of the changes in your heart rate. But these wrist devices are getting good enough if you want to just get like a vague idea. And I tend to look at both watches when I'm running to see, hey, how close are the heart rates? And I found the Epix Pro and the Apple Watch to be relatively close, you know, within three beats per minute. So I think overall, they're live updating pretty on par. When it comes down to GPS, both watches have dual band GPS. They use slightly different algorithms to figure out where you're running. Apple Watch Ultra will use Apple Map data as well to kind of smooth it out. But I've noticed the Apple Watch Ultra will hit like the 10 mile mic just a little bit earlier, whereas the Garmin takes a little bit longer. So I don't know if there's some kind of smoothing data happening with the Ultra where the Garmin's kind of overestimating or the Apple Watch Ultra's underestimating. But then when it comes down to the track, the Apple Watch Ultra just hands down wins. When I show up to the track to do a track workout, I love using the custom workouts feature. I can input what my workout is for the day. If it's like eight, 200 meters with like 90 seconds rest, I can put that in on the watch. I wish there was a way to do it on your phone. And then once I show up to the track, I select that custom workout. It automatically says, hey, you're at a track. Which lane are you in? I pick the lane and then as soon as I'm ready, I press the action button to start the workout. And it's very, very close in terms of like meter to meter when I'm running around the track in lane one. And I love that I don't have to press buttons. Like it just knows. It'll buzz when I start and buzz when I end and give me pretty close to accurate data in terms of my time of running on the distance on the track. The Garmin has the same features where I can create a workout on my iPhone and then send it to the Garmin or use an app like Training Peaks. So right now my coach will actually write the workouts and it automatically sends to the Garmin, which I love, waiting for Training Peaks beta on the Apple Watch. And that I've noticed it kind of overestimates if I start at the meter line and then I do like 200 meters, it takes a little bit longer to actually say I finished the 200 meters. So I don't know what Garmin is doing differently, but it seems to be just like a little bit off. So I'd probably prefer to manually start stop when I'm doing track workouts with that. But the Garmin does have something really cool, which is race prediction for 5k, 10k, half and full marathon. I think it's just interesting to see that data as well as trends over time as I'm training. Like, am I getting better? Am I getting worse? Whereas in the Apple Watch Ultra, you don't get as much of that data. You probably could use like a third party app to create these estimations but it's not fully integrated. And maybe that's where the VO2 max variable is more interesting on the Apple Watch. I've noticed that it actually fluctuates on the Apple Watch a lot more. It recalculates it each time I do a run outside. Whereas the Garmin, my VO2 max has stayed at 50 ever since I bought it. The Apple Watch has gone down to 44 and now like up to 52. And then I can start to learn, hey, am I detraining or am I actually trying to push the, the top end of my system? So one thing I love is if I'm in a new city or if I'm here in New York City and I wanna do a fun run, but I don't know really where I'm going, I wanna have my watch navigate me. on the. Apple Watch Ultra, I do need to open up the Apple Maps app and then turn on navigation. And then I have to switch between the apps, which can be a little bit complicated, especially when your fingers get wet and you're all sweaty. Like it works as a solution, but it's not ideal. I have to either put in biking or walking directions and I can't really manipulate the way I'm going, but I can put in the final destination and kind of run in a vague direction and then it'll reroute me. If I don't want to run in the streets, I want to run kind of along the West Side Highway. That's kind of the hack that I figured out, but I'd love to see a deeper integration with creating a running route. I know the Samsung watch does a great job of that. And then Garmin does as well. So on the Garmin app, I can actually go in and set like points of where I want to run around. I can go ahead and say, hey, I want to run five miles in this direction. Give me a running route and it automatically creates one. Koros, I think actually does the best running routes, but Garmin does have a option that's good enough. And then it's actually within the fitness tracking. So I can kind of scroll through the menus and get down to the bottom and see where I've gone, where I'm going and which direction I need to turn. I'd love to see Garmin and Apple Watch get on the same level as Koros when it comes to drawing out the map that I want to run and then giving me turn by turn navigations while I'm doing it. And then also rerouting me because sometimes I'm not very good at listening or I miss the turn and the priority is to run, not to get to the destination in the right exact path I need to. And the last piece of fitness tracking is strength training. I think a lot of like runners and endurance people don't do enough strength training. So it's like, how can we incorporate that? And is the watch valuable? On the Apple Watch Ultra, there are certain apps that I like to use where my personal trainer will write a workout and it automatically pops up. It can measure the reps automatically. It'll show me the weights. I can change the weights and I can just tap next, next, next as I'm doing the workout. So that is extremely valuable. I have links down below for those personal training apps that I love. The Garmin does have a feature where you can input the workouts and it'll measure your reps as well, but it's a bit more complicated. When you have to manually do that stuff yourself, you're less likely to do it. Like the Apple Watch has those apps too, but honestly, I never use them. It's so much easier to do it in a notebook, Apple Notes, or just not do it at all. So having the ability for someone else to write those workouts and being able to do it is so valuable. But then again, do I need to know my heart rate during these strength training workouts? Maybe, probably not. It's there. I don't use it, but it's nice to have.
Who doesn't love data? Recovery. The one thing that everyone talks about is Garmin has recovery. The Apple Watch does not. So let me buy a Whoop or an Aura ring to go with my Apple Watch. They're probably right. Use my links below and that'll just help support the channel. The more things you buy, the more money I make. I'm kidding. <laughs> Honestly, just buy it used. You'll save money. The most valuable features for me on the Garmin are the training load, right? It'll say detraining. It'll say overreaching or it'll say being productive. And am I going to listen to that exactly? Probably not. But it's helpful to know that, hey, if I just did a track workout yesterday, probably not good to do another one tomorrow. Like give enough space between workouts. And then if I do indulge in adult beverages or I don't get enough sleep, if I'm traveling, if I'm not getting enough magnesium for my diet or supplements, like I can see those recovery metrics change. And yes, there are apps like Athletic that can give you recovery on the Apple Watch, but I've tend to notice like every device's recovery metric can be slightly off. So it's like this wave and you're like, I don't know, which one do I trust? Always trust how you feel. Use the data as like another variable to help provide a little more insights, but how you feel comes first. Don't forget that. Next, the health and wellness features. One thing I love about the Ultra is that it has a temperature sensor, so it can measure my body temperature and deviations when I wear it at night. That's really helpful because I think once when I got sick, I could see that my body temperature had spiked and I was like, okay, let's take it a little easy today. I know something is up. When you tend to invite adult beverages, that can also spike your body temperature a little bit, so it's a reminder to hold back and, you know, only drink so much of that poison. They both have sleep tracking features and it's like, which one is more accurate? I don't know, okay? The best little dream EG headband that you can wear is 80% accurate. And are you seriously gonna wear that on your forehead? I did that and it kept me single forever. <laughs> so how accurate is the sleep tracking on your wrist? It's like, if you look, I can show you both of these numbers. There's like some differences in terms of deep sleep, awake, the actual time that you slept, maybe the start and end time of your sleep. I would take all this information with a grain of salt. I sleep with like seven different sleep trackers and every single one is slightly different. So the most important thing is just looking at trends. Am I getting total sleep that's good enough? Like last week, how much was I sleeping versus this week? The Apple Watch Ultra does a good job of telling me total trends of how much I slept today versus the last few days versus the last week. So I really appreciate that. The Garmin does a really good job of showing trends of that data plus like heart rate variability and training load. And then they did add in some new stuff like the stress, the body battery. And honestly, these features are cool but they're not like useful. I do have the stress on the whoop as well. If you are trying to dial a specific variable, like there's something that you're focused on in terms of trying to decrease your stress, then yes, these things are valuable. But other than that, if you're not looking at the data and trying to take actionable steps, then the data is not valuable. Don't look at it. Smartwatch features. So yeah, the Apple Watch is more of a smartwatch and it has more features like Apple Pay versus Garmin Pay. Garmin Pay doesn't support all of the credit cards that I have, so I can't put every card I want on there. The Apple Watch does support pretty much every card I have. And then in New York City, I use the subway system and I need express transit because I can just tap and go. I don't have to press any buttons. So for me, that efficiency is really valuable and important. So I pretty much have to wear my Apple Watch when I leave the house. When I go buy things, you can use Garmin Pay to pay for things if your credit card is supported. But the Apple Watch just supports everything and I can go ahead and select which card I want to use. It's super seamless. Camera control, right? If I'm setting up my phone at the gym and I want to take a photo, I can use my Apple Watch to see what the camera is taking a photo or video of. I can start and stop recording. That is really valuable to me. Koros does support that with like GoPros and stuff but Garmin does not support anything like that right now. Music control, definitely possible on the Garmin. If you have headphones where you can control the volume or press next song, pause, that could be good enough. But on the Apple Watch, you do have the digital crown. You can change the volume, you can press next. You can go through and open Spotify, Apple Music, and actually pick playlists. There's just a lot more control. It is a bit slower than your iPhone, so sometimes you know it's just nice to have your iPhone to be able to maneuver. But the full capabilities of music and music streaming, if you have a cellular plan, are available. Speaking of cellular, I think I pay five or $10 a month for the Apple Watch cellular plan and that's nice because I can leave the house and do phone calls messaging and know if there's any kind of emergency I can use my watch and then even airpods is like the headphones to make calls so there's just that extra security I can share my location if I'm going for a run and I don't need to bring my phone with me it's just very hard to do because there's no camera on the Apple watch and since I'm filming 90% of my life I kind of have to carry a phone but if you're not an obnoxious vlogger like me you can get away with it weather air quality, UV rays, if it's very humid, hot, I can just easily see, hey, what kind of clothes do I need to bring when I go outside? I wanna make sure if the UV rays are high, I'm wearing sunscreen or a hat. If the air quality outside is bad, I try not to work out. I can look at it on my phone, but I have it on my watch at all times for glanceability. And then when I'm outside with no iPhone, with cellular, I can see the weather update. You can get that on the Garmin, but for some reason, because of the connection issues from my Garmin to my iPhone, it wouldn't always update perfectly. Battery life and charging. Everyone seems to ask, oh, Garmin, monthly battery life, Apple Apple Watch, you get like a day, you gotta charge every day. The biggest thing I've learned is what they advertise is not what you actually get. So the Garmin, yes, they might say like you can get like 20 days or something, 
But when you're running and using the GPS, that the battery dies so much faster. I took it on a trip and I ran every day. I did workouts as well as on top of that. And it lasted me about like five to seven days. So really the battery life depends on usage. The Apple Watch Ultra with heavy usage will last me a full day. You know, if I'm doing cellular, music streaming, jumping around, it's like good enough. Sometimes I'll just do like the, you know, stay within the 20 to 80% range. So I'll charge a little in the morning and a little at night, you know, when I'm showering or getting ready. What I do love about the Garmin is that I can go on a trip, you know, three to five days and not have to bring the charger and plugging in with a cable is not the best experience because the Apple Watch just like magnetically sticks on. I love that charging experience so much more. Price. The Epix Pro is definitely more expensive than the Apple Watch Ultra. You don't hear that very often. This one, I think was like eleven or $1,200. It was the top of the line Epix Pro Gen 2. I got the most expensive Apple Watch Ultra as well. Each band I think is also $100. So if you add all the bands that I bought, they could be pretty on par with price. Both very high end expensive watches. So if you're looking at these two, price probably doesn't matter, but use the links down below if you plan to buy one. Now, which one should you buy? The thing I noticed is with my Garmin, I'll wear it when I'm working out and then I take it off as soon as I'm done with that. The Apple Watch Ultra, on the other hand, is more of like a daily wear, and I still do wear it when I train. So if the Apple Watch Ultra training features are good enough for you, like for example, the track mode is hands down the best, the outdoor running is pretty good, almost on par with the Garmin. Apple Watch can cover your training needs and your daily life needs. If you're looking for specific like integrations for training for a specific event, or if your friends are gonna laugh at you because you're the only one running with an Apple Watch, then yeah, maybe you should go with the Garmin. Or be like me, be a misfit, stick out. Have people make fun of you. I never thought people would laugh at you for wearing an Apple device. But I think Apple watches are becoming more and more common in the running space. And the biggest thing is if you stop training, are you gonna stop wearing your Garmin? So then maybe you should just buy one used. Do you really need the top tier? Are you a high level athlete? Figure out your specific needs and buy the watch that's best for you. These are both great devices. I will continue to wear two watches at all times just so I can keep learning and absorbing how everything works. Remember to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Shervin Shares. Turn on your notifications to see all of my future videos. Stop buying stuff. You don't need it. Trust me. Buy it used. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Why'd you buy it?